Hello learners. In form three previously, we are in lesson eight. We are deal we are still dealing with the calculations concerning Graham's law of diffusion. We have done question one up to question seven. In this lesson, lesson nine, we are going to be dealing with question eight and nine. So the first question, that's question eight, reads like this. If it takes 30 seconds for 100 centimeter cube of carbon peroxide to diffuse across a porous plate, how long will it take 150 centimeter cube of nitrogen peroxide to diffuse across the same plate under similar conditions? So, learners, we can do these questions in two ways. This question in two ways. So, we want to do the first way. So, the first way, we are going to first of all have, we organize our, our gases like what gases are we dealing with? Carbon peroxide. So how do we write carbon peroxide? We write carbon peroxide as CO2. CO2. So let us get now the molecular mass of that carbon peroxide. Carbon is 12. It has been written here. Then oxygen is 16, but we have two of oxygen. This will be 44. Okay, thereafter, the time for that carbon peroxide, we are given 30 seconds. And the volume of that carbon peroxide, we are given 100 centimeter cube. Okay, we go to the other gas, that's nitrogen peroxide gas. So how do you write nitrogen peroxide gas? NO2, that means nitrogen is 14, it is written here, N14.0 plus 16 times 2. So that one, it's going to give us 46. But we don't have the time because we are told how long will it take. Then on the other side, we're having volume to be 150 centimeter cube of nitrogen peroxide. Lanas, the first way is we are going to make the volume of carbon peroxide and nitrogen peroxide to be equal. We are going to use equal volume. So that the relationship that we are going to be using will be time with that side of molecular mass. We will leave rate. We will just leave rate. Okay, so let's get these two gases to be the same volume. Remember, the volume of carbon peroxide is 100 and that of nitrogen peroxide is 150. So we want to make the volume of carbon peroxide to be again 150. So how are we going to do that? We say if, if 100 centimeter cube of carbon peroxide takes 30 seconds, what about 150 centimeter cube of carbon peroxide? How long will it take the time? So we cross multiply. There, we are going to get 150 times 30 divided by 100. I'm going to get 45 seconds. 45 seconds. In this case, the two gases have now equal volumes. Okay, but the time when carbon peroxide is having 150 centimeter cube is 45, not 30. So we're not going to use that 30 seconds. We're going to use 45 seconds, and we are going to relate that of uh, time with that of relative molecular mass. So we are going to have our formula. The formula between time and relative molecular mass was if you are having time of carbon peroxide divided by that time of nitrogen peroxide, it will be equal to the square root of molecular mass of carbon peroxide over the molecular mass of nitrogen peroxide. Remember, time was directly proportional to the square root of molecular mass. Okay, the time for carbon peroxide is 45 because we have made equal volume divided by that side of nitrogen peroxide, which is x. It will be equal to the square root of the one for carbon peroxide molecular mass, which is 44, divided by that of nitrogen peroxide, which is 46. So here we are having 44 over x, which will be equal to 0.978 so if i want to get x x will be equal to 45 divided by 0.978 that means x we are going to get 46.0 seconds so that will be the time for that nitrogen peroxide to diffuse in that 150 centimeter cube of nitrogen peroxide Okay, that's method number one, the first method. So second method, or alternatively, we can use this, the second method, as rate with that side of relative molecular mass. So let us get the rate. So let's say this is method two. 
So can we get rate? Yes, we can get rate. Rate of carbon dioxide. Rate is given by volume divided by time. And the volume of this carbon dioxide is 100 and the time is 30 seconds. So we're having the rate of carbon dioxide to be uh, 100, 100 for the volume centimeter cube over 30 seconds. This will be equal to 3.33 centimeter cube per second. That's the first rate. That's the rate of carbon dioxide. Okay, we can go ahead and look for the rate of nitrogen dioxide, but we don't have the rate for nitrogen dioxide because we have only, it is volume to be 150, but we don't have the time. And rate is given by volume divided by time. So we don't have that. So we are going to look for the rate of that nitrogen dioxide, which we are going to take it as X. So we are going to say rate. The formula rate of carbon dioxide will be equal to the rate of nitrogen dioxide. It will be equal to the square root of the relative molecular mass of nitrogen dioxide divided by the molecular mass of carbon dioxide. Remember, rate is inversely proportional to the square root of molecular mass. That is the relationship, learners, not that. Okay, what is the rate of carbon dioxide? We have gotten now as 3.33. We're having 3.33 divided that of nitrogen dioxide, which we don't have, we write as X, will be equal to the square root of the relative molecular mass of nitrogen dioxide is that side of 46. We have written here the relative molecular mass for nitrogen dioxide is 46, and then for carbon dioxide is 44. So we're going to have 46 divided by 44. So thereafter, what are we going to get? So here we are going to say 3.33 divided by x will be equal to so 1.0225. That's what we are going to get there. Okay, if it is like that, and I want to get x, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, x will be equal to 3.33 divided by 1.0225. That's what I'm going to have there. Okay, what am I going to get after that? X will be equal to 3.257. This is the rate. So that rate, the, the unit was centimeter cube per second because we can see the one for carbon dioxide here. It was centimeter cube per second. So if we have now the rate, can we get time? Yes, we can get time because we are told rate will be equal to volume over time volume over time so my rate is 3.257 it will be equal to my volume to be 150 divided by time which i don't have remember the volume of nitrogen dioxide was 150 it is here okay so what are we going to see here if i want to get time it will be equal to 150 divided by 3.257 Okay, so X or T in our case, which is the time for that nitrogen dioxide, will be equal to 46.0 seconds. So, Lanas, you can use these two methods and still you are going to get the same answer. So, we are going to use method one and method two. Okay, <laughs> have a look at it. Then we are going to go to that question number nine. Okay. We go for that question number nine. So how is that question number nine? It is here. We are told a uh, 60 centimeter cube of oxygen gas diffused through a porous partition in 50 seconds. What would be the volume of sulfur peroxide, uh, the volume sulfur peroxide gas have if it takes 75 seconds to diffuse through the same partition under same conditions or similar conditions. So this question again, you can do it in two ways, but we want to do it only one way, one way. We want to do only with one way. Okay, that way is, in our case, we want to use rate with that side of the relative molecular mass. So let's first of all have our, our, our figures and our gases. So the first gas is oxygen gas. We write oxygen to be O2, then the relative molecular mass for that oxygen will be 16 times 2. That is 32. Okay, what about the volume? The volume is 60. That of oxygen is 60 centimeter cube, and the time is 50 seconds. 
So we're having 50 seconds. So those are the information given on that oxygen gas. So that the gas is sulfur peroxide gas. How is it written? SO2. Then that means sulfur is for 32 because we have been given there in bracket plus 16 for oxygen times 2. This one will be 64 as the relative molecular mass for that sulfur peroxide. But the volume we don't have because we are told what will be the volume sulfur peroxide gas half. So that means the time for that sulfur peroxide is 75 seconds so here we want to do rate because we have uh, we cannot do rate here check we don't have check uh, here is the relative molecular mass and this is time so for me to get this volume I have to deal with rate I have to get the rate of that oxygen gas okay how am I going to get rate of oxygen is rate is given by volume over time. So the volume of 60 over time of 50, it will be given me 1.2 centimeter cube per second. Okay. Okay, let's go to the other side. Rate of sulfur peroxide, we don't know. We can take that as X. So you say rate of sulfur peroxide, we are going to take as X because we don't know. We are going to have the relationship now. The relationship. So what is the relationship between rate and also the relative molecular mass? So we are told rate of oxygen over the rate of that of sulfur peroxide okay, will be equal to the square root of the molecular mass of sulfur peroxide over the molecular mass of oxygen gas. So thereafter, let's just try to have our values in that formula. So the rate of oxygen is we are having 1.2 divided by that side of x because we don't have the one for sulfur peroxide it's the one that we are first of all looking for to get the volume it will be equal to the square root of 64 over 32 because the relative molecular mass of sulfur peroxide is 64 and that side of oxygen is 32 so what are we going to get here 1.2 over x will be equal to it will be equal to 1 point we're going to get 1.414 okay i can get for me to get x it will be 1.2 divided by 1.414. Okay. Thereafter, x will be equal to 0 0.849. So this is rate. So the unit is centimeter cube per second. Okay. Thereafter, I've gotten rate. So if I've gotten rate, can I get volume? Yes, I can get volume because I'm going to have the formula, which is rate is given by volume over time. So in our case here, we have the volume, the volume, uh, we have, we don't have the volume because we are told to calculate the volume of the sulfur peroxide, but we have the time as 75. So we are going to say rate which is 0 0.849 will be equal to the volume, which I don't have to be X over time, which is 75. So for me to get X, it will be times 75 here, times 75 on this other side. So 75 will go to 75, X will be equal to 75 times 0 point, times 0 point uh, 0 0.849 so there we are going to get 63.7 63.7 so what is the unit for that volume it will be in centimeter cube it will be in centimeter cube Lanas, we have gotten the volume of that sulfur peroxide gas that's the end of the lesson we are done with the first chapter of form 3 in our next class we are going to go to the chemistry of the mole but before that Let's go and see the extended question. We are having question 10 and question 11 for the extended question. Try to do it and try to share your response on the comment section. Thank you.